This was supposed to be this Thursday, a, a big date promised by the French government, Stergios Moscos, this pan-European study on uh, what are uh, uh, effective uh, remedies uh, for uh, COVID-19, in particular, one that's made a lot of news here and in the US, hydroxychloroquine, the, the, uh, the active ingredient in anti-malaria and anti-lupus uh, drugs. Uh, and discovery um, has been branded by some French media as fiascovery, fiascovery, well, I guess a play on words of fiasco, uh, because, well, they haven't released much. There's just not enough samples out there. So this idea that you and I talked about last time, that we would have this, uh, that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll gather the data from around Europe, we'll get our act together and we'll know as much as possible. It hasn't panned out. So it hasn't panned out because we haven't got enough results. And that's really, really important to understand from a, a lay perspective. I can toss a coin many times. And if I toss it three times, I'll probably get maybe two heads and one tail. But if I toss it a thousand times, then I'll probably get half of them being uh, heads and the other half being tail. On the odd time, maybe I might get one standing on its edge, but you know that's very unlikely. The same problem applies to when we're doing studies on medications. And the more complex a system we're trying to study, the more complex and larger the number of samples that we uh, need to get. Now, we've seen some data being produced by um, groups worldwide around uh, these medications. And one thing I can tell you hand on heart is that with the uh, aged population in the United States where hydroxychloroquine has been given as a treatment, there was an observation of a twice higher risk of death in these patients. That's a very small study. It's what they reported though. And that's the data that has come out that's well done, well studied, well uh, and openly presented. Um, we need to be patient with the discovery study. We could request that uh, the data is released openly and everybody starts to draw their own conclusions as the numbers move, but in reality, that's not the right thing to do. And I, I'm working in this field right now, not in the discovery study, uh, but much as I have sight of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis with the samples, and some of the data is actually really encouraging, I can't turn around and publicly say it works or it doesn't work for what I do because not everybody will be able to appreciate the nuance behind what I'm studying and how this might change literally as the numbers increase. But, but so the patience is necessary. There goes. Even what you're studying shows how slow it's going because what you're studying, if I, if I understand correctly, is uh, whether or not the testing is effective. That's right. So uh, my, my study, my research is on whether or not we can replace these nasal swabs, which are sort of in the back of your nose, uh, with a, a, sam a sample that's basically your breath, uh, maybe up to two minutes of breathing. And we've got good reasons to believe that there's a, a de decent enough sample in that uh, so that we could detect the virus. Uh, the problems we are encountering actually are more to do uh, with logistics and uh, bureaucracy now. and They are less to do with identifying individuals that could be tested for this. So we've got seven clinical centers and in Europe and the United States who have signed up to help us uh, see whether or not this is uh, something useful. When it comes to testing people who are suffering from coronavirus and they're in ICU, and their clinicians are treating them in the best possible way they see fit, sitting down and looking dispassionately at the numbers and saying, does this person fit the criteria that we want to uh, uh, for including a patient in the trial or not? you suddenly see that the numbers start dropping out. And although you may have 10, 20, 100, 200 people in your ICU unit, uh, maybe in your whole countries wide, the numbers that you can actually include become a lot less. So the challenge is quite high and we must not underestimate that.